Leave the pay-per-view picks to someone who's been down with the WWE since day one. Ish. I'm Chris Wolf with the Wrestling Vlog who always tells it like it is. Happy New Year, everyone. Last year wasn't all that great, but it was much better than the year before, I think. Although, I can think about 60 or 70 former WWE employees who would disagree with me. But the New Year is a time to forget about the past. That is, unless it's part of a storyline that started last year, which is pretty much every line leading to this replacement for TLC Tables, Ladders, and Chairs. Might be a hard sell given all the college bowl games taking place today. Those that weren't canceled because one team lost so many players to COVID that it was either quit or iron, go Iron Man like a necessary roughness. But the lineup tonight sounds interesting enough for those who, like me, felt the college football season ended when their team lost their bowl game. Damn, Georgia Bulldogs. Anyway, five title matches, including both primary belts, a fairly interesting tag team match to start things off, and two grudge matches in need of resolving, although neither will be resolved tonight. All in all, a nice lead up to NXT's New Year's Evil, right? Here are my predictions for day one. Start with the kickoff show match. Cesaro and Ricochet versus Sheamus and Rich Holland. Is this what Cesaro has sunk to nearly to nearly nine years after winning the inaugural Andre the Giant Battle Royal? I still thought there was a chance that with he and Sheamus both in the same brand, the bar would be reunited. But no, Sheamus has a new lackey in Ridge Holland, and Holland has a club, and he's sure as hell not afraid to use it. Oh, and Ricochet seems to be in the same boat as Cesaro, just a pusher now. Winners are Sheamus and Holland. Drew McIntyre versus Madcap Moss. Speaking of wasted potential, just because Drew lost the title doesn't mean it doesn't escape the fact that he beat Brock Lesnar to win it. That has to amount to something more than having to beat up the protege of a man who changed angles two or three times in 2021 alone. I think we all know that happy Corbin is going to interfere sooner or later. There seems to be no other reason for him to be in the building these days. Drew is as tough as ever, but it'll be two-on-one until the ref calls the match. Winner by disqualification, Drew McIntyre. Edge versus The Miz. Ah, the battle of the aged. Yeah, yeah, Edge won the Royal Rumble last year going pole to pole. No one's denying that. But the fact is, he's still on in years. The only real difference between him and The Miz is that The Miz has more or less been constantly fighting. True, he had John Morrison to help the last year or two, but he did fight. Edge had been recuperating for many a year before returning two years ago to relatively part-time work, but oddly the rust didn't settle on him. When he came back, it was almost like he never left. The Miz? There are times we wish he would just leave, as entertaining as he may be. Begrudgingly, I'm going to pick Edge, but only if he goes full brood again like he almost did at SummerSlam. SmackDown Tag Team Titles. Usos versus New Day. Uh, here we go again. Lack of tag team talent in the WWE leads to two old-timer teams battling for the gold. But again, it's about entertainment value more than in-ring talent. King Woods has been getting a lot lot out of wearing his cape and crown, and Kofi Kingston is having a gas as his first night or whatever. And the Usos have been wowing us too. Through Roman Reigns, usually, but still. Anyway, there is a reason for my pick this time, and it's not really because of rain longevity or the like. I'll explain the reason later. For now, I'll say that the winners and new champions are the New Day! Raw Tag Team Championships, RK Bro vs. Street Profits. Oh, how I would love to see the Street Profits get the smoke again. It's 
been entirely too long in my opinion. They have what it takes to make tag teaming great again in the WWE. Best of all, they're still relatively young. I can sort of see them as the new day of the 2020s. However, it doesn't seem like the WWE is quite ready for an RK Bro split up, although you just know it's going to happen soon. I mean, hell, Riddle is already mentoring MSK back in NXT, and all three will face Imperium on New Year's Evil. If that becomes a full-time gig, chances are Orton's going to end the team by Royal Rumble at the earliest. For now, though, winners and still champs, RK Bro. Raw Women's Title. Becky Lynch versus Liv Morgan. We already lost one bright hopeful in Tony Storm, and yeah, Morgan's been on the main roster for some time now, but I don't want to see Morgan pushed back into obscurity by big-time Bex. Not that I want Becky to lose either, but she has been looking like a part-timer lately. Yeah, she's still recovering from childbirth, I get it, but the reason she was referred to as the man was because of her fighting spirit. Nowadays, she just yaks about how great she is, and when a challenger comes around, she leaves saying, eh, she ain't worthy of a title shot. But Morgan certainly is, and she deserves a title shot. Deserving a title? That's another story, but I'm going to say Becky Lynch keeps the title. For now. Universal Championship match, Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. I don't think there's been a primary champion of the WWE throughout an entire calendar year since Hulk Hogan held the WWE title throughout 1985, 1986, and 1987. And funnily enough, Reigns fights in front of TV cameras about as often as Hogan did. But here's the thing. The only reason he became Universal Champion is because Paul Heyman talked him into waiting and waiting and waiting before signing a contract to fight for the title in the, his first match back from a hiatus away from COVID. And the only reason he held on to the title is Heyman's machinations to protect Reigns from losing the title. Would Heyman gone, will Reigns be able to handle the Beast Incarnate? Probably not, especially if Heyman returns to Lesnar's side, which I believe he will. He won't hold the title for long, but the winner and new champ will be Brock Lesnar. See, that's why I think the whole bloodline will lose tonight. Finally, a fatal four-way for the WWE title. Big E versus Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins versus Bobby Lashley. Were just Big E against any one of them, I'd give Big E better odds of winning, but with all three wanting to pound the power of positivity positively down Big E's throat... I have my doubts. Yeah, it's wholly possible that the three challengers wear each other out, and given that it's a no-DQ match, things are bound to get wicked. Between Lashley's overwhelming strength, Owen's tenacity, and Rollins' cunning, Ugly doesn't even begin to describe the throwdown between those three. Plus, let's face it, any of them deserve the title. Well, maybe not KO, since we weren't even sure if this would be his last WWE pay-per-view until a few weeks ago. But the thing is, Big E has strength, tenacity, and cunning all wrapped up in one awesome package. I think he'll hold the title up until WrestleMania at the least, and he won't wait for anyone to wear each other out. He'll gladly do it himself. Winner and still champ, Big E. Those are my picks. And here's open my resolution to get more picks right holds for one day. Or in this case, day one. <laughs> I'm Chris Wolf of the Wrestling Vlog who always tells them like it is. Stay safe. And I'll see you.